Hey guys, so you're building a home and you love the idea of building your network inside of it. I agree with you 100%. And today's video, we're going to show you how that all connects together. We're going to give you examples and show you just exactly what you need to be thinking about so you understand how the pieces all connect together in your new home so you can get your planning right. Hey guys, welcome to the Ethernet Blueprint. My name is Tim Trich, and on this channel, we focus on helping our viewers plan and build in a great network into their new construction home. And this video is going to be more of just that. Now, when it comes to planning out your network in your new home, I really have this broken down into four different things you need to be thinking about, four different areas that you need to think about so you can plan this thing correctly. Now, the first area is your internet connection. Where is this going to be coming into your home and where do you want your router to sit? Don't leave this up to the internet service provider installer because they will do whatever is easiest for them at the time of the install. Second is your network drops. Where do you need physical cabling in your home pulled to? This is talking, we're talking about cameras. We're talking about access points. We're talking about hardwiring TVs, maybe kids' bedrooms, things of that nature. So you need to have a plan for that as well. The third thing is Wi-Fi. How are you going to do Wi-Fi in your home? Are you going to do ceiling mounted access points? Do you need Wi-Fi outdoors? Are you doing a simple mesh system? All these things need to be kind of thought out ahead of time. And the last thing, the fourth thing is your network head in. Where are you going to put your network equipment? You need to have a game plan for that because all the cabling you pull in your home is going to be pulled back to this point, okay? So we're going to be going over all these in a lot more detail in later videos. But in this video, we're going to be talking about how does it all connect together. So I'm going to give you a little tour of what's behind me. And I'm going to kind of show you how this thing connects together. And then we'll kind of show some other videos down the road that kind of helps put the pieces together. But today's video, let's just talk about how's this thing connect together. Real quick, before I get into the content of this video, I did want to point out that in the description, there are some links to a guide as and even some courses that will show you how to plan the network properly in your new home. They start at $27 and go up to $97. So we're not talking about a lot of cost, and it is more of a deep dive on how you can plan your network in your home. Now, on to the video. Now, I figured a really easy way to show you this would be to show you my actual network setup in my house. If you see up top here, you see I have Verizon 5G home internet, okay? And so this is my modem. Now, the nice thing about 5G is I don't have a cable. I don't have to worry about getting a cable to this location. However, if I had Cox or CenturyLink or whatever and my modem was sitting on top of my rack like this, I would have to have a game plan for getting the cabling from outside of my home to this location. And I'm going to show you exactly how that was done prior to me moving over to Verizon 5G. So I think for a lot of you out there, typically your neighborhood has some kind of pedestal system like this. Okay, so this is an example of Cox communication and it just so happens that my pedestal is right near my yard. So the service from Cox comes from Cox to this pedestal and then there's a cable buried from here under my yard up to the side of my house, which we'll go take a look at here in just a second. Now, that pedestal has a buried fiber cable right here going from under the ground into this Cox box, okay? So this is how they are bringing service to my home. Now, in a normal circumstance and something you guys have to kind of be ready for, this is where we talk about controlling where the network head end is connected. They are going to run a cable from here to some place inside your house. And if you leave it up to them, they're going to do whatever's easiest. Now, in my case specifically, I had an unfinished basement. So it was very easy for them to run the fiber through my basement to my rack location. However, that if my basement was finished, this would have been very, very difficult. And I would have needed to give them a path to get there. And let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now that fiber comes through my concrete wall here and then is run 
throughout the rafters in my home. But can you imagine if my basement wasn't finished? I need to get it all the way over here to where my rack is at. And there would not have been an easy way to do that unless I gave them a path to get there. I need my internet connection to be over in that rack. There is just no getting around it. Now, I have an unfinished basement. And if you guys have basements or an unfinished portion of your house, maybe this won't be as big a deal. But we run into a lot of situations where we go into houses and everything's finished. And then Cox or CenturyLink or Spectrum or whoever you're using does not have a good path to get their connection to where you need it in your house. So you need to be thinking about this in your home. Now, before I show you my modem, I want to just show you this right here is called Smurf Tube. Smurf tubing is a really, really nice thing that you can add to your new construction build before the drywall goes up that allows the internet provider to get their cable where you want it. Okay, so you would simply install this, hide it in the drywall, hide it in the ceiling, and then basically it is a direct pathway for them to be able to send and have it run right and just end right by your router. And then basically they can run there, push their cable through it with very little trouble to get the cable right where you need it in your home. Now, this is my Cox fiber transceiver, okay? So this is where the fiber that runs from that box on the outside of my house, it runs into here and it's terminated in this box and then converted to ethernet. So there's an ethernet connection that used to be plugged in right here that comes out of that and then that cable would go into my rack and give me internet. Now that I've switched to Verizon 5G home internet, I no longer use this, but it is there if I ever decided to switch back or if Verizon started acting up and getting slow, I have a connection right here, ready to go, fiber behind my rack. All right, so back to my rack. So we have our Verizon 5G, this is my internet. There is a cable coming out of the bottom of this. As you can see right there, there's my cables coming out of the bottom and that goes to my router. Now this is a Ubiquiti USG Pro. Um, it's very similar to the Dream Machine, but has a lot of differences too. Um, but this is what I currently use in my rack to get internet. And I have the internet plugged in right here into my WAN port that, that basically ties the internet to my network. Then I have a single LAN connection right here on my router that goes down to my switch. Okay, so it's actually plugged in over here. And then I have all these ports on my switch that allow me to run everything inside my home. So you can see I have my modem, I have my router, and I have my switch. This is gonna be something that you're gonna use in your home as well, okay? Most homes have a modem of some kind or a modem router combo. They're gonna have your, you're gonna use your router, the device you wanna to use to manage your network, and then you're gonna have a switch. And this, all this sits in your network head end. All right, so now we're gonna kind of translate that to this setup right here, okay? So let's say you just have a simple network with this has a 16 port switch, it has a router, it has a UPS. That's, let's talk about how this all connects together, all right? So we talked about how the internet provider comes in and in this scenario, you're gonna have, in this scenario, we have an active internet connection right here that's actually run through that tube over to my modem, over to the Verizon 5G modem. Okay, so that Verizon 5G is also providing internet over here. So this is my active WAN connection and it is going through my congregated tube up there that we call a Smurf tube. That allows my router, which is a unified Dream Machine Pro, to get an active internet connection. Next, we're plugged in from one of the eight switch ports. This actually comes with a built-in switch, which is really nice, so it gives you some extended port capability. And I'm using one of those ports to plug into my 16 port switch. This allows me to extend my network into this switch. Now the switch is what's gonna connect everything together. All the cables that are pulled in my house are gonna come and they're gonna plug into this switch to get online, okay? And that's how it works. If you take a look from the side here, you get a little bit better picture of what I'm talking about. So all of my cabling run through my house is run to this location. Now, I put one of these in in my lab just to kind of show you the benefits of hiding the cable in your drywall. I don't have a bunch of cables running down my drywall. Matter of fact, you could even put the Smurf tube that you can see here at the top, you can put that inside your drywall as well. Um, I ran it after the fact, so I didn't hide mine, but again, it just, it really depends on where your network head in is gonna go to kind of 
dictate that. If you have a concrete wall like you can see right here, obviously you can't hide it. It's just going to run down the wall. But if you have drywall and you're thinking about this thing ahead of time and you know what this thing's going to look like ahead of time, it makes it really easy to hide those cables in the wall and then just do a nice cable access plate, also known as a swoop plate, to have all your cables that run throughout your home come out in a nice, um, in a nice bundle here and they go right into your switch. Now you have a couple options. Mine are actually going into this patch panel. So I have a patch panel up here and all of these cables are terminated in the back and then I just simply jumper them from the patch panel down into my switch. There's a really a couple reasons uh, that I like on why I do it this way. However, as I'll show you here in a second with the network shelf, um, I don't have a patch panel. The patch panel really I use for rack builds only you can add a patch panel to a shelf um, but i really don't think it's necessary and in all honesty if space is an issue and you need to get a smaller rack and you have to sacrifice some space you don't need the patch panel you can actually just run your cables right into the switch even though there's a thousand people on the internet that will tell you not to do that i've been doing it for years it works just fine just make sure they're terminated correctly all right, so the nice thing about using a patch panel, though, is you have all your cables coming in, and you can see these are all blue, but a lot of times when you go into houses, sometimes there's some yellow ones, some green ones, some whatever. It's whatever the builder used to install um, in the house. But if they're, if they're run kind of here behind the rack, you can actually color cord your cable. So this cable right here, this black cable, is actually going to my access point, and these blue cables signify cables going to other areas of my house. That way, when I walk up to this rack, I know that this cable is an access point, and if I see that it's offline, that tells me I know I got an access point offline, okay? Now, as I'll show you two here in just a few minutes, there are different areas of the home and what the jacks will look like, but everything runs back to here. Everything runs back to this location right here. This is what makes it all work. So choosing a network head in in an area of your home is really important. You want it to be somewhat temperature controlled. You need it to be able to, you need to be able to have space. You need to be able to get on both sides of this rack and be able to get in there and work on things. It's one of the reasons I like an open frame rack, but they do have racks that are completely enclosed and they just put some fans on the top to kind of help you keep your equipment cool. It really just boils down to your space and what you're looking for and your budget and whatnot, okay? So you got your UPS, you got your router, and you got your switch, and in this particular case, you got your patch panel, and all of the cables run throughout your house, come into this location in a nice tight bundle, and allow you to get everything online. That is how this thing connects together. Now let's take a quick look at a network shelf, just so I can kind of point out some of the differences. Okay, guys, now there's a lot of ways to do this, okay? A lot of different ways to do this, and so don't think that you know, this is the only thing you have to look at. This is just another example of a network that you can put in your house, but it's made up of the same components. We have our UPS right here. This is just a smaller wall mounted UPS, or it can set up on the shelf depending on how much space you have. I like a mounted underneath personally, so you can hide the power cables and kind of get them up out of the way. We have all our cables bundled, nice, neat, coming in through our swoop plate, coming out of the wall and going directly into our switch. This just signifies, again, similar to the rack, all of the cables run throughout our house. Now, this is a eight port switch. The other one was a 16 port switch. Maybe you need a 48 port switch like what I have in my normal rack. But at the end of the day, that will be dictated by you. But this is just a switch sitting up here and all the cables are run directly into the switch. Um, no patch panel. Okay, so you can see there's no patch panel here. All the cables are just terminated and plugged in. By having it in the wall like this, it allows you to kind of shove your extra up into the wall and get it up out of the way too, which gives you a nice clean look. There's nothing fancy about this shelf. It's just something you could pick up at a Menards or Best or um, Menards or uh, Lowe's or a Home Depot. Very very simple hardware. Okay, so we have our UPS underneath, we have our switch, and then we have our router. Now this is a Synology router but it signifies the same thing as the Dream Machine Pro. I have an active internet connection coming to it through our Smurf tube here, as you can see. We have our active yellow internet connection going into the WAN port, and then I have one single cable going from the LAN port of the router into our switch, which basically means everything that's plugged into this router and this switch are all on the same network. Now, this is a non-managed PoE switch, so you could actually use this with access points as well. Um, as you can see, it says right there, unmanaged switch, and this is a PoE. So it's providing power on each one of these ports 
if you had cameras or, or access points in your house. Now in this particular setup, I'm using more of a mesh system. So this uh, Synology router has another one upstairs and they are communicating physically. They're physically connected together through these cables, but they are basically part of a mesh like system. So again, no right or wrong way to do this guys. The setup is the same, the connections are the same, and how this thing connects together is the same no matter how you do it. So hopefully this will give you a, a little bit better picture of at least how the network head in goes um, and just so how the pieces kind of connect together. Here I'm gonna show you next some of the termination points in my house and what they look like, like a camera, an access point, and even just a jack so you guys can kind of see you know, what that kind of looks like in a finished product. So I wanna just give you kind of an idea of a jack in my home. This is in my living room, kind of a lower jack that I use for uh, different things. Actually, I use it for testing a lot. Um, so a lot of times it's even open and not being used. But behind this gray cable right here, behind there is a blue cable that runs throughout my home and goes down and is plugged into my switch. So I know that this jack is hot. I also have jacks in my kids' bedrooms. I have some in my office area. I have them run to my access points and I have some run to my cameras. Okay, so every one of those jacks symbolizes something that is physically plugged into my switch at my network head end. And that is what makes this jack hot and able to get online based on the rules I have set up in my router. Now, this is an example of an access point that I have in my house, and I'll kind of zoom out here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. This is a ceiling-mounted Ubiquiti U6LR access point. I really like them if, you, if you're if you gonna be using the Ubiquiti side of things. And behind this, underneath this access point, is just a single gang box, like you would install for a, a, a light switch or whatever, a plastic, there's a single plastic gang box behind here, and there's a single Ethernet Cat6 cable, and that is what gives this power and its network connectivity. And again, that cable runs all the way back down to where my network head end is and plugs into my switch, which allows this device to get online. The next thing I'm gonna show you is one of my Ubiquiti cameras. So again, on the other side of this, running up through the eve of my house, is a Cat6 cable that runs all the way through my attic and then drops down to where my network head end is and is plugged into my switch so this camera can get online and record events that happen in my driveway. Thank you guys for tuning in this video. I hope you found it helpful and just kind of giving you the overall concept of how this thing connects together. Now, obviously there's a lot of factors that may play in your home that aren't here. There's golf simulators and all sorts of crazy things. Um, so I encourage you, if there are some high-end AV type things, or you have some really high tech needs in your home, guys, I encourage you to consult with a professional. This is just meant to give you kind of a ground level knowledge of how this thing comes together. I truly, truly believe that building in your network is the future of how your home needs to be wired. So if you are building a home, guys, you need to look at doing this. Having physical cables in your home to help take some of the pressure off your Wi-Fi is the greatest, best way to do this. And I really, really believe that. So hopefully this is helpful. Like or subscribe, follow us guys. There's gonna be more videos coming like this. If there's something you'd like to see, please leave it in a comment below and we will get to those videos as soon as we can. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you in a future video.